Hey guys, Nick here, and today we will be seeing if Negan will actually go through with making all the rest of the saviors stand down and work with the Reckonous people, or if this is all just a secret plan for Negan to get back his role and turn on Rick. This is part four to the remake of What If Negan Killed Maggie. Now, Negan steps up to the entrance of the sanctuary, where all the saviors have come out to, awaiting Negan, Simon, Dwight, all the saviors that have took a very long time to return, and now Negan has appeared alone. He tells all the saviors what happened at the clearing, and that one of the people that he killed was a pregnant woman, and that he has made mistakes, a lot of them, and he tells all the saviors that they're going to stand down, no more taking over communities, and they're going to work with Rick and their people, and peace is going to be the number one factor of the saviors from this point on. Now, there is a long moment of silence, with the saviors being completely blank as to what Negan just said, and then, laughter. Complete, unbridled laughter. Every one of the saviors cracks up at this. Well, mostly all of them. And then the rest follows suit. Except maybe like Sherry and stuff like that. But anyways, they cannot believe what Negan's saying. Because half the time you could never know whether Negan was serious or not. Because Negan's sense of humor and everything, it was just, you never knew. But Negan shuts that down right away, and the nearest walker, either the one who, who would be in chains, or one that was barred up to the walls of the sanctuary, Negan slams his bat straight into the walker's head, and then flings the blood from it across a bunch of saviors. And they now know... That from what Negan just demonstrated, he ain't fibbing. Everything that he just spoke was the truth. Now, of course, there a bunch of the saviors thought this was true, but a lot of them laughing, you can't help but join in with a whole crowd of laughter. Anyways, Negan makes it truly clear that his role as the savior's leader is changed, and that Rick is basically the new one in charge. He will still take authority for the most part of the saviors, but as for, like, giving orders and making sure the peace is well, Rick is now the new one in charge of that. And he, Rick steps out and is very happy that Negan kept his word and did not try and rally the saviors together to fight. It definitely made it a lot easier. And with that said, the saviors look to Rick as the new leader, but still look to Negan. Rick says that Negan will still be a leader to them for the most part, but as for taking over communities and stuff like that, they're all going to work together. So there's not one specific leader overall. It's kind of unanimous, honestly. And with that said, Negan still does have to go in the cell for some time. He has to pay still for what he did to Rick's people, Maggie and Abraham. And Negan's just about to give the bat back to Rick, but just then, right when he's handing it, a gunshot rings out from seemingly out of nowhere. And the shot goes straight through Negan's hand. And for the second time, Lucia falls to the ground. And But who did this? Who it is surprises everybody, but no one more than Rick. The one who fired the gunshot and stopped this all from happening, stopped the peace, was Glenn. He just could not Stop the rage and sadness over Maggie's death, leading him to do this. 
even though Negan said that this rage would turn him into something more than what he was, Glenn didn't care. It was just too much for him. Because if you guys know how close he was to Maggie, then you'll understand what I'm saying. Rick cannot believe what Glenn is doing. They're finally so close to peace and Glenn's just about to botch it all up just for revenge. Rick tells him to stand down and put the gun down. And what he's doing is a big mistake. But Glenn is so full of rage now. The sadness? Oh, he cried and bawled plenty. Now there is nothing left in Glenn's mind except rage. Complete, utter rage, anger, hate, fury, every word you can think of that basically means he is not going to listen. He doesn't care what Rick thinks or Negan thinks. He doesn't care what anyone thinks. He just wants Negan dead. And that, and just then, he goes and turns to Rick and says that he's responsible for this also. Whenever Abraham died, Rick just sat and watched it happen. Didn't try to get up, didn't try to fight, didn't do anything. He just sat there and let it happen. And then, whenever Maggie gets killed, he just sits there and lets it happen again. And then, whenever Negan throws the sob story in about his wife and what made him a bad guy, telling Glenn not to be just like him, everything before didn't matter about their family, who they were with. It mattered only when Negan did that story. Did Rick want to step out of that derpy foothold that he was in and act like a leader? But then he just spares him. It's like a big joke. And Glenn is just like, <laughs> no thank you at this point. And if Rick's not going to step up and be a leader, he will. Because... It's like Rick doesn't even care that Maggie and Abraham died. And he just cannot get Maggie's death out of his head. This is Glenn. Imagine Maggie, her hatred for Negan still. With Glenn, that's like times a thousand. And that if he's not going to be a leader and kill Negan like Shane or someone else would or could have, then he will. Rick says that he's doing this for him. He owes his life to Glenn, for God's sake. And he wouldn't be alive right now if it wasn't for Glenn. And Daryl has admitted it in the original show, and it's true. He owes his life to Glenn. And he's doing this for him. And what Negan said about him becoming worse than Negan is true, and Glenn should know more than anyone, especially back at the prison, how Rick was when he lost Lori. Shane, he knows what loss is, and what it turns people into, and Glenn being like this, it's not going to solve anything, and that he just needs to stop. He's doing this for the greater good, to not be just a soul killer and a monster. But Glenn says, that's what Negan just demonstrated at the clearing. And that if it were Shane or Lori or Michonne or Carl that Negan killed, Rick would have killed him right on the spot and he knows it. Basically, Maggie and Michonne talk, except Rick and Glenn here. And it's true. That is very, very true. And honestly, Glenn is just thinking that Rick's treating Maggie as if she were a pile of trash. Even Abraham. But Glenn is way more focused on Maggie. Maggie is the sole front here of Glenn's anger. And it's like he, she doesn't even matter to Rick. But Rick, hearing Shane being mentioned and the, the possibilities of Negan killing someone close to him, everything that Glenn was saying made sense to Rick. But now... Glenn's just taking it way too far, and Rick has had enough. He has had way 
more than enough. He thought that after beating Glenn down the first time, that that would have made him stop. But now, shooting Negan and saying all this stuff, he's taking it way too far. And Rick and Glenn get into another fight, with the fight being way more even this time. Because we not only have one person that's full of fury and rage, we have two. And that's what makes the fight so even, is because they're both angry. They both have to get anger off their minds, except Glenn is way more angry here. Negan, seeing all of this happen and transpire, doesn't know what to think, who to save. But then he makes up his mind, gets himself out of his head, picks up his bat, even though his hand, you know, shot through his hand, and takes his bat and slams it straight across Glenn's face, knocking him to the ground and knocking him unconscious, at least for the moment. But this does not kill him. I'm going to say that again. This is not killing him. And here's the thing with that also, for those of you questioning this. The reason that he hit Glenn and not Rick is because if he would have hit Rick, Glenn would have killed Negan and this, it really wouldn't be anything to go off of after that. The story would be... I, I honestly don't know what I would do with the story after that. It would be pointless. But the reason he hit Glenn is because Rick has helped him see the light. And sure, Glenn did do that, but he's tried to kill him on more than one occasion. Whereas Rick has given him a chance. And Glenn is still alive, like I said, because he wasn't slammed in the head like he was originally, so his eyeballs not popped out. But he was slammed across his face, and he was lucky that it didn't break his jaw. But it did seriously scar his face. Now, Rick, after this, is tempted on killing Negan here just for attacking Glenn, even though he's not dead. But... You gotta think about this for a second. Negan did attack Glenn, that is true, but he didn't attack Rick afterwards. He attacked only Glenn because Glenn was fighting him. And if you think about it, Negan just saved Rick's life here. He could have killed them both right then and there while they were fighting, and possibly gotten himself killed. But he did the right thing by making Glenn stop. And... Rick honestly has to thank him for that. And Negan's kept his word so far on not rallying against Rick and everything else. Rick then turns to Glenn, who is now awake again, but badly bruised. Basically what he looked like when he was tortured by Merle and when he was hit by Negan. Honestly, I'd mix the two together, except he still has both eyes. Rick goes on, to have a full-on speech towards Glenn here, and says that this is not what Glenn was like before. And he once again says that Maggie's death has turned him into something he's not, and that if he goes down a worse road than he did, or Negan did, or anyone did, it will get him killed, and it nearly just did. He doesn't... Rick does not want to be known all the time as a killer. The only reason that Rick has killed ever is because it was for the greater good. Shane, he asked for it. Every other guy that he has killed, they asked for it. He never had a choice. And the reason he's doing this now, sparing Negan, he's doing it in the memory of Dale, who would have spared him. Herschel would have at least found a way to spare him. Lori who definitely would be close to not sparing him, but would want to, and in the memory of her and Carl, who is still around, to the living memory of Carl, who would want a future, even though he's not demonstrated that part of him yet. And towards Negan's dead wife, Lucille, who made Negan what he is because of her death. And it's all jangled together to build a better future. And even though Rick has killed before, and that 
Glenn is most certainly right. If it were Shane, Daryl, Michonne, Carl, Lori, any one of them who kill, who got killed by Negan, he would have done something. And it's not that he doesn't care about Maggie and Abraham. He just does not want to be known all his life as a merciless killer. He does not want to become what Negan was or what other people in his life that he was fighting or around became. Glenn finally understands where Rick is coming from. And it's all back to sadness now. And says that, okay. Now, while he says this, he says to Rick, he might be saying okay here, and he might be standing down, but he's never, ever, ever forgiving Negan for what he did. And that just because he's not going to kill him anymore, he's not going to ever forgive him. And that's okay. That's understandable. And the funny thing is, also, is that the whole time that this was happening, all of the saviors, and Daryl and Michonne and whatever other people from Rick's group would be there, watched the whole thing go down. And when Glenn shot and the whole fight happened, they were just seeing how it would play out, similar to how it did in the clearing, because they figured it would resolve itself. Although all the saviors didn't really see that go down. But that's okay. And the fact that Glenn does not forgive Negan, that is okay. Because Maggie and the baby were killed. It, it makes sense. But now, everything seems to have been solved. And now, peace has seemingly been restored. But has it? Because of Glenn acting in a much more callous way than Maggie ever has... In her attempts to kill Negan, which we know about if you guys pay attention to The Walking Dead. What does this mean for Glenn doing it so soon with Maggie and Herschel's death? Does that mean that the rivalry will end much sooner? Or is this what Glenn has demonstrated leading into a more twisted plot to get rid of Negan? And that's where we leave things for the moment. Definitely a longer episode than I had originally planned, but for what the details had for this specific one, I definitely wanted to bring out all the stops to demonstrate not only how Negan has changed so early, but how it's affected Glenn since Maggie and Herschel have died, and the way Rick feels in sparing Negan in this particular story. But I hope you guys enjoyed nonetheless in this part. Stay tuned for the next one, and I'll see you guys next time.